Hey everyone. Hope everyone has had a great day today. Hope everyone's having a wonderful evening. Yeah, I'm sorry I wasn't able to come in yesterday. Happy work that you had to deal with. So, but I am gonna be here tonight. You know, tonight I think I'll do something different. I'm gonna take things back to basics. I think what I'll do is I'll do a simple still life. And for a still life, I'm gonna do a create a little fruitful. So, so I create our fruitful. We start by actually drawing like one long oval. This is gonna be our edge of our bowl. And to create the underside, the edge of the bowl, the bottom, we do one half circle. We usually like bowls making ceramic bowls, but then a little extra edge at the bottom, a little more stable, so. I'll draw a little bit at the bottom here. Now, to get our own fruit bowl going, let's see what fruits we can add. First, let's start with a couple of apples and oranges. So usually, if those are fruits you're going to want to have in there for the most part. And for our apples and oranges, they're basically going to be represented through circles. Because pretty much, you know, apples and oranges, they're pretty much circular, you know, in shape. Of a larger one, like right behind the orange here. And I have all these little circles that like, overlap each other. And for the apples, what I'm going to do is add a little crushed in shape here at the top of each apple. Add the little stem at the very end. And for orange, just have a little dip at the end for each one. I think I'll add one more orange here. There we go. This is not after all shape for the apples done. We want to flesh them out. Usually, if apples are a little bit more rounder at the top, then towards the taper down towards the bottom. Same for this one. There we go. Perfect. I think we'll also add as well, I think I'll add a few bananas. So I'm gonna add a few bananas right here. And use it to be these long, like crescent moon shapes. Let me see how many I wanna add. So I got one. Gonna add another crescent. So you got two. Got another one underneath these. I'll overlap these. So I have three. Add another one here for four. Let me move this over so you can see it's a little bit better. There we go. I think that's good enough. Well, that would be a very, very small, like, like app. Excuse my apple, like banana bunch. So we'll have that. Also, let's add a few grapes. So our grapes will be represented in very small, small circles. They're all overlapping each other. Now a few will come out down here and they're gonna spill out onto the bowl and onto the floor. I want to overlaps here. There we go. I think we pretty much got our fruit bowl ready to go and our fruits ready to be shaded in. So first thing I'll go ahead and do is actually start shading. I think work on our orange right here. What I'm going to do is like that's something like I mentioned last time, going across hatching direction. So when I put down my line, I'm going with the shape of the shape of this orange. But keep in mind with this orange, I'm doing it as one big sphere. So all the shadow's gonna go the shape of this of this sphere to shape.
the cross hatch to kind of make it a little bit more even. I hope everyone has been having a great, e great evening so far. Once again, I'm awfully sorry that I wasn't here this past um, Thursday. I do work like this, I needed to take care of me that day, so I wasn't able to do it that day. I definitely want to make sure I did today, which is a good thing. I'm going to do the same for this one right here. Going against the shape of the spear. Just view this orange as one big spear. There we go. You know what, I think we'll start moving on with these apples next. And here it's gonna be more of the same deal. But right now I'm being fairly light as I'm actually laying down my marks here. So I'll start out light and I'll progress get heavy as I go further on. There we go. The orange here. There we go. Add a little bit darker here once I get in this little corner. I know later on this evening, I'll do a little more prep for the prep for our day job tomorrow. The night stream may be a little bit shorter than usual. But at the very least, I want to make sure you guys get a chance. You know, see something, you'll get a little doodling in. And I'll be preferably if you guys are watching, as you ever get back your hand, so you just doodle like wrong with me. Let's get this apple done right here. Don't want to leave him out. Bring the shell just a little bit more. There we go. We get the little orange we got back in the back here. We get that going. And yeah, since we got our light source coming in from the top right, our shell is going to be coming out from the left. So let's get our shells going. We have one shadow here, some shadows here. In your place of shadow, this can also really help make it a big deal as far as actually like letting know how far how close thing is. So I can see here our bananas is actually up close to us where this apple's further away from us. And these other fruits are like right in the middle. And, you know, right now that they're all pretty, like, bunched together and close together, but, you know, as we start shading and start establishing where our shells are and where they are in relation to each other, it'll be a lot more clear as we go further along. So while I'm at, let me go start scan shading our bowl right here. Once again, I'm going against the shape of the actual bowl. Since this thing is big and long, big and long, so I make sure my dark area is going to be towards the edge, the left edge of the bowl. And as I go further towards the right, I'm going to try to get lighter and lighter. Let's 
There we go. All right, let's make it just a little bit darker. Just getting lighter and lighter as we go further along. Now, granted, right here, we're going to add a little backdrop shadow here for these grapes. So I'm going to add these down here. Add one here, add one here. Let me start like just really shading these grapes a little bit. I'm not going to do too much on these for right now since these are so small. When we get around to detailing later, I'll do more of these. But you can see I'm having them all like overlap each other. It looks a lot more realistic. There we go. Actually, give me just one moment. Are that back again? I have to go check on something. Let me move this over just a bit more. You guys can see it's a lot better. There we go. There we go. All right. Now let's see these bananas. Let me start with this one right here. So it's usually one side going to be in shell. I'm going to start shading one side here. So we are about one of them down. We get another edge of our banana here. Get shade this side, get that going. We share a third one right here. And also let's kind of shade at the very top up here since usually the little stem that connects them all together is usually a little bit darker compared to the yellow skin all these bananas have. Okay, so we got our bananas. Shane, these little grapes here in the back. Add some like nice little brief shells going. I'm not going to do too much right now because we're going to do more of these later on as we go further along. So we got that going. Good. Now let's kind of start putting our shadows here. The ones we briefly sketched out. So we'll start pretty dark towards the edge of these fruits. And as I fan out, I go lighter and lighter. Same here. As you see, once we start establishing our shadows here, now we can get, get a sense of space. We can see you know, what's close to us and what's further away. So you can see our bananas close to us, our bowl of fruits a little bit further away, and further back you know, is going to be our apple here. So we're going to make sure I have our shadow here. Indication of our shadow here as well. There we go. And you know what? Since I think now we've got our basic shape set up, you know, with this red pen, let's move on to a different color, which is going to be some blue. So let's get our blue pen out right here. And so what I'm going to do now, start going over the areas we've already done, but I'm going to start making just a little bit darker. And I'm basically going over there to kind of heighten that contrast. Of course, I do want those darker contrasts. And also, as I'm doing this, I'm actually starting to add more detail as well. So, I'm going to make this stem a little more pronounced. Add a little groove at the top of this apple here. And darken this edge right here.
I'm just going at a uniform cross hatching, cross hatching side, and cross hatching motion. I usually prefer doing it this way because I feel you know the same way I can get a good, nice, deep consistency of what I'm looking for. And also keep in mind, when we're done with this, we will be adding color to this later on. So trust me, it won't stay like this for long. Let's move on to our orange here. Start at the bottom here. You'll see the fire is a little bit of light. Let's go over our marks that we've made. There we go. Hey, media collector. Hey, how you doing? It's good to see you. Glad you joined the stream. Yeah, I'm sorry I started a little later than usual tonight. I feel like I had to take care of it earlier in the evening. Yeah, right now I'm just doing something that's a little bit simpler tonight. There we go. Let me get this pocket. Let me get this a little bit darker. Can I get the edge of this edge of orange? Make that much more pronounced. And make sure this edge is darker. This is in the shadows. It's right behind this sap. I want to make sure it kind of pops against this one. There we go. Maybe a little bit darker down here. You know, let's move on to this next orange here. And just really kind of hiding that contrast. And just go over it. Right, let me kind of get the shape of this orange going. I've already got there, but we need to make it more pronounced than outline. Going against that shape. Maybe a little darker in these little pockets here. There we go. You know, and as you, know, and as you can see, you know, as we're draw, as we're making these shapes, just keep them very simple. We're just bring on top of them. Yeah, Thomas. If I do have time, yeah, I definitely will try to get around to actually drawing him later on tonight. Yeah, because this right here shouldn't take too long. You know what? Let me get these grapes. Let me get the shape of these grapes more pronounced. Oh yeah, I remember you from the last drink, from the last one you did. That's it. I'm sorry I didn't know it's your message at the very last minute with the last one. Yeah, for some reason when I was finished with the last stream, it started freezing up on me. Give me just one moment. You know what, let me get this little, get this little orange shadow here going. 
We get that nice and dark here. And also, let me start adding little shadows for our grapes here. There we go. And so I'm just doing a little bit of cross here. Everything's gonna be a little bit more, a little more concise, a little bit more, a little bit smaller since these are grapes. Everything is gonna be smaller. Because I know pretty much once I go over all of our, go over all our shading with all our fruits here, I'll just go straight into the color like right afterwards. We get our shadow going here, get it going here. Draw Unspeakable. Huh. You know, I've heard of Unspeakable. I'm not too familiar with it, though. But that sounds like it might be a good idea if I once I look that up. Let me get that going. There we go. And let's get our grapes down here. And making sure, you know, I'm break blocking our shadows making sure they're nice and visible to the viewer. And you see these grips are all overlapping each other, you know, one behind the other. Here, let me get this one right here. You know, also do a shady to talk about that for a little moment. Make sure I get those going. You know what? I've been doing pretty good. You know, I've been kind of tired. I had to work a lot this week. You know, I've been doing pretty good. I'm. Thank you for asking. I appreciate it. I know I meant. I know I'm kind of repeating myself. Yeah, I meant to actually be come up here early this past on Thursday, at the work way yesterday. So wasn't gonna make it last night for the stream. Let me get our shadowing leaf here. Give me just one moment. Down here, one little solar turning gray. Shadow for these bits going down here. You know, I think what I'll do is I'll add a little, a little details, add those small little stick things that will kind of them all together. Sometimes you would break are all connected by a little break line. Now we're doing that, let's get this little orange shaded in right here. Let me get the shadow for this one going. In case anyone's wondering, you know, this type of drawing is called a still life. And usually a study where basically you're drawing um, drawing various inanimate objects, 
And usually, you know, these are great if you're just learning how to do shading or learning how to draw objects. You know, as far as learning how to shape, you know, how light bounces off an object, you know, breaking objects down to simple shapes. You know, still lives, they're perfect, you know, perfect ways to actually practice that. Let me get this apple here. Let me get the shape. In fact, you know what? Let me get the shape of this bowl here. I forgot to get the bowl going. So let me get the lip of this bowl here. Let me get the edge. You know, just come around at the bottom. Let me get this little tiny, tiny little edge at the bottom too. They'll come out on the other side. That's a picture of my cat. Oh, that's whose cat it is in your um, avatar. Oh, she looks adorable. That's funny. I've ne I never really owned a cat since I've been a stray. I got I have hanging out. Yeah, I can tell. Let me get a little closer look at it. Yeah, your little cat's adorable. How long have you had it for? Give me just one moment. Oh, three years? Okay, cool, cool. You know, I've always, you know, weirdly enough, I've been wondering whether or not if I want to get a cat for myself, when if I have my own pet. Because, and I, because, because, oddly enough, for some reason, I've never been that much of a pet person. But yet, I've been around people who've always owned pets. Because I know my pet, my parents and my aunt and uncles have always had dogs. I know my sister; she had a rabbit at one point. And on top of that, we had a whole bunch of goldfish. And but we never had that many cats. But I feel like if I ever decide, you know, get a pet, a pet for myself, it might be a cat. Because you know, cats they can be pretty chill, you know, they're pretty independent. I've always, you know, liked that about them. There we go. We get this bowl shadows going. So I'm just gonna start the edge right here. See, I don't mind going pretty dark because I got a lot of many shadows set up. It's dark on one edge, and exactly light to the other. And also, another trick thing I'm doing is that as I'm actually shaking this edge, I'm not going to really dark on the rough edge for outline yet because what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this area a little bit light so we put kind of a backlight. So that when we put in our shadows, it'll make it pop just a little bit more. And part of what I want to do is so that way, you know, our shadow we have cast from the bowl doesn't blend up our shadow that's actually on the bowl itself. We're gonna have that come out and we'll stretch out a bit more. And you can see, you know, as we get further away from the bowl, you know, our shower gets lighter and lighter. I have a buyer. Her name is Emily for four years, we pretty soon. Oh wow. So you have both a cat and a bunny. Oh, so you just got a lot of got a lot of pets. So where y'all are moving to? I think the closest, the really closest to a pet that I think I've really had to be true is probably just the goldfish, really. Got a whole bunch of different goldfish. And, you know, on top of that, like, I think a turtle I wouldn't mind have probably be a turtle. Even though I know they're not the same 
top because I know apparently they don't really do much, but I always like reptiles, so it's something I wouldn't mind having. Let me check this banana here. Just a moment. There we go. Okay, good. Now I can see it a lot better. Get our shadow for our banana. I'm gonna get to start right around here. And I'm not gonna go too dark, you know, since this banana is gonna be yellow, I don't want to be too bold with our shadows. There we go. There we go. Get our edge of banana here. So we see have a pretty small, small little bundle, very tiny bundle. Now let's get our shadow going here. We're gonna start fairly dark along the edge. I'm just gonna fan our way out. Just gonna fan it out. There we go. All right, let's not forget our little apple right here. Let's get him shaded in. Get our little stem going. Add this little dip in the middle at the top. Just make it a little darker on the edge here. Dark here, not just too much. Leave a little bit of light on the edge. And let's put in our shadow. Oh wow, so you have a, so you have a cat, you got a dog, you got a bunny too. So you, so, so you really have a lot of pets. Yeah, but that's cool. That's really cool. Okay, great. So I think we got our shading in. So now let's color everything in. In fact, let me break out our colored pencils. Give me just one moment. And so the type of pencil I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using these woodless, you know, Koinor pencils. I found these at Sam Flats about a few years back. And the cool thing about them, you know, is just the actual, like, lead of the pencil itself. And so this is, you know, what they look like right here. And so I'm actually going to use these as far as coloring. And I think I'll start with this little orange right here. So I'm just going to go along the edge. I'm going to start fairly dark. And as I get closer towards our light source, I'm going to use less and less pressure as I go further out. Because our little highlight's going to be right here, in this, right here in the middle. So I'm just using less and less pressure as I go closer towards the center. But more pressure as I go further out from the center. You get blend this out just a little bit more. There we go. There we go. 
Let's do our next one right here. And even though this um this pencil pack has like 24 colors, probably not gonna use too much since I already did a lot of shading here. There's no need to add like a whole bunch of colors. It's like, I don't think I really need it for this one. I have three dogs, two puppies, three kittens, three cats. But one's in heaven, his name is Molly. One's about Molly. I'm sorry to hear that about Molly. You know, funny enough, even though I don't have pets on um, my um, aunt, she owns a bunch you know, of different dogs. I know she has one that's a poodle. I think she has one that's a shih tzu. I think the poodle that she had... Yeah, it recently had um, puppies not too long ago. I think it had about three of them. You know, she let me see them. And I know every now and then she also dog sits on one of my cousin's dog. And he has um, a little puggle. A little, I always found those things to be pretty adorable. There we go. Let's get our little orange here in the back. There we go. Let's get our little orange right here. And one bunny. Yeah, just hearing about that bunny, that just reminds me of the one, you know, my sister used to have. And I remember we called our, our her little bunny um Sky. I remember I think we only had it for a three only about a few months. I forgot what happened, you know, to that to that bunny. But I remember, you know, every now and then when she would look at it, I'll kind of help feed it carrots. And the funny thing about it is you know, we realized, you know, we have to kind of keep it in the cage because of course. Once the kind of tend to kind of run around the house, they get really excited. Excited. There we go. So our oranges are looking pretty good. Now let's move on to the apples. So instead of using um an orange, let's use some red. Now, grant this one's broken, but it'll do the job just the same. So I'm gonna start right along here. Along the edge. And I had less pressure, I don't really like a few here. Okay, so Sad that we don't have, them, have our mama cat Molly. Hey, I'm really sad to hear, hear about Molly. How long? Excuse me for one moment. Hang on. Hang on. All right, I'm back. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. I bet Molly, she was a beautiful cat too. How long, how long did you have on um, Molly? You don't mind me asking. Mm -hmm. 
Because even though I haven't really had any else, you're going to really feel like lose a pet, especially one known for a long time. I think the closest I felt was probably not with one of my pets, but my sister's dog. Um, she had a Labrador and a And I remember I used to play, you know, with her, play for a dog every like also all the time, you know, after school. And her, my sister and I would play the canyon together. But I think one day we had. I don't know what happened. I think she ran away. We were never able to find out, you know, what happened to her. June all the way in November. Okay, oh, so you had her for a couple of months. Yeah, I'm really sorry to hear about that. Yeah, but she's definitely up and hasn't looking down at you. The funny thing is, if I do get like a cat or a dog, a part of me kind of wonders what type of cat, what kind of breed it will be. But I think, same time, I figure whatever it is, that probably won't really matter to me that much. I think, regardless of what kind it is, I'll love it all the same. Let me go, let's get this little apple going here. Yeah, make sure, you know, he's, not, he's nice and red and nice and delicious. Yeah, when it comes to apples, I've always preferred, you know, like red delicious apples. I think I think they're always the most tasty. There we go. There we go. All right, now that we got that going for our apples, let's start coloring our bananas here with this pen, with this pencil. And it's like a golden yellow. And see, it is part of the reason why I, I went pretty light with shading here, because since I know yellow, yellow's pretty bright color, there's no need to use like really dark shadows. At least I'm searching up for this with these two. She was the one that had the kid. She had six kids. She had a lot of kittens. That is a lot. We color our banana here. We color Nell's peel. I think what I'll do for this stuff right here. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow here for this one. You have some apples that can have a little bit, some little bit yellow on the side. We do that for this one here. I think what I do is add a little bit of yellow for this one here too. There's some more that can have a golden yellowish tint to them. There we go. I think for the stem, we color that in in brown. So we color the stem here. Get the little bottom of our bananas here. We add some little spots. There we go, add little spots here. I'm gonna use that and shade in our bowl since I got this brown while we're at it. We got that done. Let's color in our grapes. So for our grapes, 
I didn't have a, I had to do a rash purpose card, so I'm going to use this one right here. So I'm going to color all these in using that this color. And I'm just kind of going one at a time. You see, June 29th is my birthday. So can you please do a birthday live chat for me? You know what? Actually, give me just one moment. Let me see if I'm going to write that date down so I won't forget it. Let me see. June 29th. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I want to make sure I write down. So, yeah, I believe that's something I can I can probably do for that date for June the 29th. Give me just one moment. I want to know if you watch the NFL. I do every now and then. I don't keep as much of sports, you know, as I sports as I should. But I tune in every now and then watch the NFL. Like sometimes if I watch, I'll watch either the Seahawks, you guys are one of my favorite teams. Other times I'll either watch the 49ers. But I don't keep up it as much as much as I probably should. But every now and then I do. There we go. So I'm just get you get more of these grapes, just kind of doing them one at a time. Yeah, I need to get I need to get back up the update NFL because I know the Super Bowl that's gonna be I think next month. And even though I don't keep an NFL that often, I always do like tuning in for that. So I know regardless who's playing, I know it's gonna be a great game. Do is get these little bits here at the bottom. Let's get these little panel up here. There we go. Let's get these little grapes at the bottom. All right, cool. We're almost done here. You know, I thought, let me kind of color in this background that uses up this little blue green color right here. I think I'll just use this light green color because I like this color. Here, I'm not going to go in particular order. I'm going to use just the color in this background. 
That'd be a simple one just one color here. Down here. So do on little edges here, do the edges here. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good with this one. Let me have that in full view so you guys can see it. And that, my friends, that is what we call a still life. So guys, hope you guys like this one. Let's move on to our next project. So give me a few moments to prepare for this next one. Give me just a few moments. Hope you guys enjoyed the first illustration I've done so far. So we're gonna move on to our next one very soon. a few more moments so i have to kind of move things around for a moment There we go. So, think by our request of one of our viewers, the media collector. Next one to do is Tommy the Tank Engine. And since Tommy has a pretty simple design, he probably shouldn't take too long. So, first I'm gonna do. Let me do a little circle for his face. Draw a little cylinder. Right now I'm just gonna write him to get the overall basic shapes of, of the actual train here. For his little caboose, gonna have that view in one cube. Actually, the whole thing in a way is gonna be it kind of be one bit cube. At the top of the caboose in the back, add a little chimney stack here. Here, let me add his wheels here at the bottom. I know usually I think he has about three, if I remember right. One, two, three. Well, three on each side, that's what I meant to say. Give me just one moment.
Let me get the edge at the bottom here. In fact, let me go actually go ahead and get his face. You know, that's one of his more distinct features. Because he has two round, two round eyes. Let me get his little nose. Mouth. His mouth here. We have it open so we can see his teeth. His eyes here. We draw his eyebrow because he's got a nice like, single triangular eyebrow. Draw a little smokestack here at the top. If you want to do a little extra detail here at the bottom, a little headlight. We get the front side here. There we go. Get the bottom area here. There we go. Now let's get the side of him here. Let me go and get these wheels, make them more pronounced here. Now, I'll admit this one is kind of a tiny bit of a challenge because I normally don't draw vehicles that often. But you know what? I like the challenge. I really like the challenge. To have little pitches that are going to go on the side of the wheel. Have that here. Get that little thing that's on the side. Forgive me if I'm not using the correct terminology for trains. If I knew, I, if I knew what they were, I'd say exactly as they are. <laughs> Make sure that's in place. There we go. That looks good. I'll get the top of this no caboose. I forgot it comes out here. Number one, that's one thing I definitely vividly remember, you know, Thomas, you always have that one, that big number one, you know, on the side of the bottom of the train. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Of him here. We get the top of the boost here at the very back. Get the little peep hole here. See where I think the whistles are. They'll get the back up here at the very top. Let's 
There we go. It will smoke through these wheels here at the bottom. So I'll find them a bit more as we go further along in the sketch. Here we go. That's looking pretty good. So let's go refine our sketch. You know, with so the values our red pen. Let's use it more with our blue pen here. And you know, speaking of trains, it's been a very, very long time ever since I've ridden one. I think the last time I think I ever rode a train had to be those years and years ago. But I remember I think it was Am Amtrak. Amtrak was in a place. And I remember my mother and I, we rode on everything from there, from I think where we live out to DC. I think it was I think it was about eight hours. But I remember being a really fun ride. So let's get his eyes going here. Make sure they're nice and circular. And he has his nice thin triangular eyebrows. And you get his mouth. And it's open. Let's get this, this whole circular face. There we go. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. What do I do with my drawings? What do you do when you're done with drawings after you're done with them? Usually what I do with my own drawings, sometimes I save my sketch for safekeeping, but a lot of times I tend to post them online. So usually what I do when I share my artwork, I either post them on places like DeviantArt. That's my main place where I post all my artwork. Another place I post, I'll sometimes post it on Instagram. Other times I post them on Tumblr. But DeviantArt is the place where I like to post my art because I like to share a lot of stuff that I draw. And then just as I'm sharing my artwork here through streaming, I like to share, you know, in other places too. But a lot of times, especially if I have some drawings that I really like and I don't want to get them damaged, sometimes I'll tear them out the sketchbook, kind of put like a small like, performance like that where I know they won't get damaged. Because one thing that'll tend to happen you know, after a while, if you don't keep track of your sketchbooks, you don't keep track of what you lay, they can get damaged and banged up after a while. So I always keep the mind when I put them down, especially if I know I'm going to use them moving on. The side of the side here. And even though I'm loosely working from like a physical reference, I am kind of like I'm on the style to it. I don't want to style it too much, but I still want you to know that maybe I recognize it. Recognize it I want you to look at it, and you know, guys will know for certain that this is actually Thomas. Back at the boost here. Let me get the side of it here. There we go. I think we're gonna, let me add a little shadow here so I know this there that's gonna be in shadow. I'll do it for this side too. Let me get this little thing right here. Cause I like this one, I will be coloring that other one in as well. There we go. 
And do I still keep the drawings? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I definitely still keep my drawings. Yeah, because I tend to like to hold on to the drawings that I have. And plus, you never know. I might use it for something else later on. In fact, speaking of keeping up, keeping drawings, um, in fact, here's the one I actually did um earlier last week. I did one on Son Goku. You know, one of my other um viewers they suggest I do something slightly different style. So I figured, you know, let me do something that's in more of an anime style. Let me see if I have it in here. Give me just one moment. Ah, oh, yeah, here we go. So, like, say, for example, like, here's the very last one I did um last week. So, I did one of um, Son Goku. So, I want to do some different style. And see, like, like, I always like to keep my old stuff on the side because I know sooner or later I'm going to use it for something. Or if I want to show it to other people, I want to keep them on hand. So, yeah, that's one, that's one of the few that I am you know, currently keeping. So let's add a little more work for Thomas here. Sorry, hang on, give me just one moment. Stand by, gotta make a few camera adjustments. Excuse me, there we go, there we go, there we go. There we go, all right, perfect, perfect. At top of the caboose here. We got the side of the ear. No. In fact, let me go with our shade in this little area right here. So a little more down. There we go. Take out a little shade down here. Special for it's white. Uh, oh, excuse me. I'm awfully sorry about that. Let me get the bottom, the bottom side underneath. I go underneath his wheels. Well, above his wheels here in this case. Here we go. Get this side nice and even. Make sure that looks good. Oh, I forgot to make Charles one here. And I drew it earlier, but I want to make it a little more for now. Now let's get the wheels going. Let's start with the pieces on the side. Alright, there we go. We need to the wheels, which are in that room. I 
had a little standard of milk for all of them. Add those cloaks in the center. And every wheel has their own fight to go. They're almost kind of going like a clock in a way. They're almost like hands of the clock. But they're all going out the same direction. Here we go. <laughs> it's okay. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Front at front, you going? By the way, I, I hope you all of you have really been enjoying you know, the streams so far. Now, I know it's still kind of rough around the edges. You'll still kind of get used to the whole like street kind of dream bits, kind of learning to trade, kind of learning things, how to do everything, make everything set up properly. But you know, each time I do it, I always end up learning something new. Yeah, but I still appreciate you all that are actually willing to come in and watch. Because I just want to keep something, have something that's really nice and relaxing. Because, you know, I feel, you know, drawing, it should be a relaxing experience. It should be a fun experience, too. And I just hope you guys are actually hoping to relax and have fun, you know, with me. Let's shade underneath these wheels, too. There we go. There we go. There we go. Let me just kind of share underneath this the siding of his face here. There we go. Take out a little shadow. Shadow where the smokestack is here. Make sure I add the little shadow here at the bottom. There we go. Okay, cool, cool. You know what? I didn't know that you were going to be doing that. Be doing that. Oh, you mean the? Um, I, you know, I was going to be doing the um, the side, side the train. Or, or is it the bird? <laughs> oh, I see. Sorry for not joining the other live stream. I know you're going to be doing that. Oh no, it's totally, it's totally all right. It has one cool thing, you know, about YouTube. He's like, pretty much once I'm done with the stream, it'll record all of them. So whatever ones that ones that people are to miss on, they can always watch replays. But to be fair, with that other stream, I ended up starting a lot later than I normally did. So pretty much a lot of my usual viewers, they probably didn't know until much later. Okay, so now. Now we got our basic shape set for Thomas. You know what? Let's start coloring him in. So I'm just gonna start with his blue, the blue parts of him first. Just colored all the areas where he's usually blue. Like I had mentioned earlier before, you know, that book that I did last week, you know, that was a test, you know, I had gotten your profile for other things from last year because I think something like a style. But, you know, since I normally don't draw for the Canada style, I think that'll be somebody I want to go ahead and try. 
Yeah, it'd be something I really like. Because, you know, weirdly enough, like, as much as I like Dragon Ball, I've been familiar with I'm going to get off the chat, but it was nice to talk again. Yeah, it was really nice talking to you, too. I'm glad you are able to join the stream tonight. Yeah, I was really happy you were doing for tonight. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, but you too. I hope to see you again soon. Yeah, in fact, I'm going to keep working. I'm going to finish on working on this. Let's kind of close out the stream. All right, see you later. Let's continue coloring all of our blue areas here. There we go. There we go. As far as drawing something in anime style, I might do that something like that again next week. Now, I'm not sure what I'll draw. Maybe I'll draw somebody for Dragon Ball again. Or, you know, maybe I'll probably do something for Lupin. Because I've really gotten an old Lupin franchise of it lately. But um, what was the other thing I was going to do? What, 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 what? Oh, yeah. The Dragon Ball thing. So, weirdly enough, even though I used to watch the Dragon Ball a lot you know, growing up, you know, I knew people in my school used to like drawing Dragon Ball. I never really got out of really drawing a Dragon Ball character, you know, myself. Until, like, much recently. And so I figured, you know, let me go and try, you know, see how it worked. And you know what? It turned, it went, you know, very well. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now, let's start coloring in our areas in red. So I color in these little bars here. There we go. There we go. Let's color this little siding here. So all the ears in red, that's what I'm basically coloring in right now. Get this little sidebar here. We get the front side, may have to be a darker shade of red since it is in shadow. There we go. All right, cool, cool. So now let's go back in with some yellow. In fact, I'll use the same yellow we used last time for our bananas. i use that here. Cutting his little whistles, cutting his little spy, the spyglass thing in the middle. Cutting the little edge on the side. Coloring the one, of course. There we go. And also, now let's start going in with our black. So I'm going to start with the top of our caboose here. Going to color that all in black. Can make that be a dark black. There we go. And since the area is facing towards the light, I have that be like a light gray. And even though I'm technically not using a gray, I'm basically just using this black using like lighter pressure on it. Get that little thing that's here in, that was in the corner. Probably an extra wheel that you might need. Color the smokestack, his little chimney black. Because smoke's gonna come out somewhere. You know, they got a little smoke coming out the top here. Get the little side of his face here. 
That's also going to be more of a dark, dark grayish black color. I think we'll do a couple of little shadows here for his face. So he's got a round nose. Got shade in his little cheeks here. There we go. There we go. I think I'll shade the side of his face here. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. Let me shade the side of so his little light here, his little front light. I think I'll shade these things down here. Cool, yeah, it's really coming together. Give me just one moment. I think I'll start coloring underneath these wheels. Here. Try those little front parts down here, my bells being black. You know, once I'm pretty much using this black pencil, it will be pretty done with this pretty soon. Like the only thing I really have to really do is probably we'll probably take in a little black thing by having that one on me. That was just probably, probably two sets of outlines here and there. Gonna get in between those little spokes of that wheel. Do the same for these other ones as well. Yeah, Thomas, I think it's probably been years I've seen that show with Thomas and Pink Engine. I remember, I remember seeing a lot. I had a few times you know, growing up. But I definitely remember having you have those little Legos, those Lego toy sets they used to always had. I remember those a lot more vividly than you know. They were always fun. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's just like kind of drawing this to bring up a lot of memories. Let me get the side of his wheel here, make sure that's nice and dark. Let me do it for this one here as well. Okay, sure that's nice and well. Let me get okay, shade just a little bit more. Make sure it's a little bit darker. Make sure that's a little bit darker here too. And then color in the spokes of our wheel. Color those in. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good. So now, now that we got our colors in place, let's refine our outlines a little bit more. So we're gonna use, you know, this pen here, this black ballpoint pen. And basically, I'm just gonna be going over our outlines. It's kind of really we make it a bit more pronounced, a bit more readable. Now that I'm doing this, I'm adding a few little extra details here and there. I don't really plan to add too much stuff already to all the ones, the important ones I wanted to add already.
do. What I normally do whenever I outline, I don't like you like thick outlines. I feel it's gonna pop a little bit more. Right, and just regular thin outline. It is a stylistic choice, I know, but you know, it's a stylistic choice I kind of tend to like to use a little bit. Get these little lines here on the side. No, I realize that red is darker. Let me come back and use the red a little bit more. Just make it a little bit darker. Sorry, go back and pencil the bias. I'll make it a little more, have a little brighter red. And see, now I think it'll be able to happen as well when you're drawing. Like sometimes you'll see something pop out that you want to try to fix or improve on. And you want to try to fix it right away. I make this a little bit darker. There we go. There we go. Okay, that looks much better. So let me go around these wheels. Get a little spoke that's going on the side of these wheels. Get this one too. Let me get the bottom area here, the bottom of these wheels. Side, side of her train here. Pick up these outlines on this side. I can't write in here, here real quick. Outline the side of his face. Because yeah, we'll be done with this actually very, very simple. Let's get the bottom here for a moment. Let me just kind of hit any ears. I think I may have forgotten to get. I'll pick a few outlines here. Okay. I think we're looking pretty good here. So. That, my friends, that is Thomas, Thomas our tank engine. So guys, I hope you all enjoy, you know, watching me draw Thomas. I certainly enjoyed drawing him. I don't need a collector. Hey, thanks a lot for the suggestion. This was actually pretty fun, you know, drawing this. I hope to see you guys since. I hope you guys enjoyed me watching doing Thomas and hope you guys as much. <laughs> Still life as well, but I enjoy it as well. So I should be back again like next time, next week. Hopefully, if I'm off, I should be back off on a Thursday. I can do it then.
But if not, I'll try to go on Friday like I did tonight. So guys, I hope you have a wonderful night. So stay safe. Have a wonderful evening. Until then, keep drawing.